Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some interior design trends that are back, but someone has to ask, should they be? Now we've got some things to talk about, so let's get into the video. Now the first trend I wanna to talk to you about that is back and I am absolutely loving, I think it's a great thing it's back, is actually the day bed. A day bed I think is really fantastic, especially some of the new ones we are seeing being produced because they actually are kind of like a sleeper sofa or just like a bed period. A lot of these are great because if you have guests over, you can actually set this up as a bed. They can stay the night. A lot of people don't want to commit one of the rooms in their houses to being just a guest room and unusable for the rest of the time. I also think day beds are really fantastic because they don't have a back on them. They can actually be used to fill a space or an empty area of your home and still let a lot of the light pass through because sofas, even though they have backs on them and they can be lower, they still block light from coming into the space. So I think a day bed is really fantastic. You could push this against a wall, under a window. There's so many uses for a day bed in any space. So I'm glad to see that this trend is back. I think these are great. They have a classic element to them, but a lot of them are very modern in their styling. So definitely be on the lookout for benches or day beds that have those arms that actually can be used in a space in place of like a sofa or two chairs to create a sitting area, a conversation space, but that's actually actually usable and maybe they can convert to a bed if you need that extra guest space. You all know when it comes to wood tones in a house, these can be very trend driven things. And right now we're seeing dark woods become so much trendier, they are back and they are back with a vengeance. I love it. But you know, I'm in that person that I'm kind of like, listen, don't invest too heavily in a trend, stick true to your style, curate your home. So if you really like this dark wood trend, I say bring some dark wood into your home, but don't do every single thing dark wood unless you really like dark wood and you don't like those lighter wood tones, that's fine too. But stay true to your style if you're going to do this. Don't just renovate your house to be on trend. Now, I love a dark wood piece of furniture. You know, I've got them all in my house. I love like a deep, rich mahogany. I think that's so beautiful. But then all of the floors in my house have a light oak tone to them. So I really like to mix those two different wood tones together because I think they contrast really beautifully. And when the darker wood is not on trend, the lighter wood is, and my house feels like it's current. But when the lighter wood is not on trend, the darker wood also helps to make it feel like it's very current, very now, and very fresh. I love all wood tones. I think they're fantastic. As a matter of fact, I don't own a single piece of painted furniture in my home because I really, really, really love to see wood tones. So I definitely say go for them, invest in them, get some really great pieces, layer in with other tones of wood because you don't want to commit to one thing too much because once a trend comes in and then it's out and it's this and it's that, you just want to focus on what's timeless and classic for your home and your style. Now, you know, I already have a classic undertone to my style. I like to layer modern things. I like to layer traditional things together because I love that juxtaposition. So when it comes to a traditional element becoming more trend driven and being back, I do really love that. And one of those things right now is wallpaper. It is everywhere. I love wallpaper. I love to see people being adventurous with what they're doing in their homes, right? I always think that's fantastic. Innovation is really what drives design. And I think this is one of those things, but wallpaper being back is a good thing, but it also has its downsides because wallpaper has to be installed and that means you have to have flat walls. So a lot of people have textured walls. Are you gonna smooth it out? Are you gonna spend that money to have the wallpaper looking as best as it can be? Well, wallpaper is very expensive, so you probably want to. So you have a lot of expenses with the wallpaper. Just getting the wallpaper in hand is very expensive, let alone having it professionally installed, which of course I always recommend because wallpaper looks really good when it's installed really well and you don't wanna do a DIY on that and and it not come out very good. Something else you wanna consider is the fact that wallpaper is a very personal choice, right? Like you invest a lot of money into it and you have a specific style that that wallpaper works really beautifully in. But if you wanna change things, if you wanna do something different, it's not about buying a can of paint and a roller, it's about removing that wallpaper, which is a messy job in itself, and then installing something else. Or if you wanna paint, now you have to get all the glue off the wall, it can be a mess. So wallpaper, while I think it's great that it's bad, 
Mac, I do think you wanna be mindful about how you're using it, where you're using it, because a really beautifully installed wallpaper is great, it's timeless, it's elegant, but it's not everyone's style, and you may not love it forever. So keep that in mind. And you know, the, the cost of wallpaper can be very significant. And that's something I'm always trying to tell you. I mean, I know you all know that. You know who I am. And those of you who are binge watching and have yet to subscribe also know that. But maybe that's not the point. And those of you who are new here, just do yourself the favor and hit that subscribe button to begin with. Join the Lashik family and turn that bell notification on to get notified every time I upload. But you know, I always try and be realistic and tell you the truth about what you're getting yourself into. So I love wallpaper. I think it's beautiful, but it can be expensive and it can be a big job to undertake. It's something worth considering, but it's something worth looking into seriously before you jump right into it. Let's talk about something that is super trendy right now that is back and we need to ask ourselves, should it be? And that is postmodern design. Now, postmodern is huge, very popular. People are really loving it. And I've always had this love-hate relationship with it where I really love the forms and shapes of postmodern style upholstery and furniture pieces. A lot of the accessories I think are really cool. And postmodern was known for being very geometric and very architectural and using asymmetry really successfully, but something else about postmodern that I think really resonates with me is how a lot of you feel about mid-century. Like when you lived through mid-century design, you realize that not everything mid-century was really great. And the same thing with the 70s. Like if you lived through the 70s, you realized how much brown there was, how dark things were, how maybe not great every single thing was. So you're kind of like, yeah, that's not for me. I lived through the postmodern era. I'm a millennial. Postmodern was really popular in the late 80s, early 90s, all the way up to the 2000s. So millennials, we kind of lived through it. That's why you see a lot of the Generation Z generation that really like postmodern design because it's kind of like retro to them, but like when you live through it, it's maybe not the same. I do like postmodern and I think it's a great style. I say like every interior design style, mix it with something else to create something that's unique, that's interesting, that is personal to you. And if that blends a little bit of postmodern design in it, I say go for it. And if that's all postmodern with a little bit of a historic reference to something else, I also think that's wonderful. Just make sure you're not sticking too close to one specific style in your home. I actually did a video all about how to mix different interior design styles that I will definitely be linking in the description box down below for you. A trend that is back that we need to talk about that everyone should be asking themselves, should it be back, is wall finishes. And we really loved like a painted wall finish maybe like 20 years ago, right? Like a sponge paint, a texture. We did it all on these houses, very like Tuscan Mediterranean design when that was like the thing. And it was fun at the time. I think a lot of people had a really great time DIYing this and doing it. But we're seeing that come back today with something like lime wash. This is a wall finish that's applied and a lot of people are DIYing it. It does look really Really good right now, but we need to ask ourselves what amount of timelessness does this have? Because truth of the matter is, it can be very hard to look past what is current, what is now, what is on trend, to see past that and see how long it will be around for. So definitely be considerate of whether or not you're going to like that in the long run, but also what the long-term effects of that are. Can it be painted over? Will it be permanent? Is it easy to change? Like sponge painting, you could just paint back over it with normal paint and it went away and that was great. But can you do that with lime wash? That's a question to ask whatever company is making the material you're using. And you also want to be careful about plaster finishes that are really in right now. Hey, it sounds cool in theory and it looks cool when it's done, but what is it going to look like 15 or 20 years from now? Will it be timeless forever? Who knows? You have to determine that for your own style. It's also worth noting that a lot of these wall finishes are based off of very high-end and very expensive wall finishes like Venetian plaster. This is something that takes a lot of skill to do and apply to a wall. It's a very expensive finish because it requires a lot of labor. And this is maybe not the sort of thing you wanna attempt to do on your own. So if you really like some of these custom wall finishes or these really interesting things, look and see if there's a way they can be applied applied that would allow them to be reversible or painted over in the future if you don't like them. You also want to consult and get professional help 
on doing these things in your home because you want to make sure it's a job well done so it doesn't look messy or sloppy or cheap because one thing we all know for sure is we don't want to do a renovation or a customization and then regret it right away. One design trend that is back that many of us are happy about but we have to ask ourselves should it be is actually the closed concept home. We all know that open concept was the thing for the 2000s, right? Like it was everything you saw on television and magazines and articles, open concept, everything. And now we're to a place where we're like, hey, maybe that's not really the best idea. Maybe it's not super conducive to how we actually live in our home to have one giant room. So closed concept is becoming more popular and this is the idea that you have segmented spaces where one space has one use or it's a little divided off from other spaces and could have multiple uses. So something like a dining room or a formal living room, a den, all of those are closed off. But you want to be careful about how close concept you go. Having good flow between rooms and spaces, it increases the amount of light each space has. It increases your sight through the space, what you're visually seeing and the way spaces work between themselves and with each other. I think all of that is really important to have instead of just having spaces that are completely closed off. Although one thing I will say is my current home is a lot more closed off than a lot of the ones I've lived in before and I actually find that I'm able to have more open space but actually have more furniture, more artwork, more storage pieces than ever before, meaning my home is more organized, it's tidier, and it's cleaner by having some of those closed off spaces because I have more wall space where I can actually put those things. I hesitate to call this next topic a trend but it is something we have to talk about that is back, that is here to stay, and that is sustainability. So sustainability really became a thing we thought about and we were really talking about in the early 2000s with LEED certification and eco building, but it kind of fell out of fashion or never really picked up as much as it probably should have because not everybody wants to live in an eco-designed building because these often have a very specific style to them. A lot of it's steel, framed, glass structures, ultra modern that not everybody likes. I really focus on sustainability through my design choices, through the materials I'm using, not only things like low VOC paint, but just focusing on bringing things in that are really, really amazing quality. Because in my opinion, avoiding things going to a landfill is a great way to focus on sustainability. What's the life of this going to be like? How much of that can I get out of it? And then what is it going to be like once I'm done with it? So focus on quality in your home. That's a really great way to embrace sustainability without having a lot of the sacrifices or compromises in style that sustainable design often offers us. Something I often talk about and I really am very passionate about that I love is vintage. And that's the next trend we have to talk about. And we have to ask ourselves, what impact is that having? Should it be a trend? Should we be buying vintage? And what does that mean for us? A lot of the really amazing quality things that are being produced today are definitely modern in design. So looking for vintage is understandable to bring some of those pieces in. But the reason I'm talking about this today is because we have a lot of focus on vintage right now. A lot, a lot of focus, and I'm so happy about that. I see it all over social media, and I absolutely love those little, you know, short videos of people like what they th found at the thrift store, what's there, what's going on. It definitely inspires me to get out there and go shop for some things I probably don't need, but I definitely want. That's not the point, though. I want to mention, I want to bring up, and I want to talk about the fact that we need to focus on small batch furniture manufacturers. We don't need to write off everything new just for the sake of vintage. I really love high quality brand new upholstery pieces in my home because they're easier to deal with, they're easier to get your hands on, and honestly my upholstery people have such a backlog of reupholstery because everybody's going for vintage that it's not even funny. I think buying brand new, really high quality, small batch furniture manufactured pieces is really fantastic. Focusing on supporting talented artisans today really is going to create the vintage of tomorrow. It'll get you a lot of life out of brand new pieces in your home, and that way you can definitely mix more modern and more traditional styles together. I think that's something really great. I love that we are embracing vintage because I just do that. I've always done it and I really love it, but definitely be on the look out for some of those new pieces by really talented, trained craftspeople so that 
we can support those industries because we don't want to lose them. We want to have really great quality in our lives and for the future going forward. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure you share with me in the comment section down below because I want to hear from you. I also want to know what is a trend that is coming back that you're really happy about, that you're seeing, that you're doing in your home. Maybe it's something you've done forever, but now it's trending and you're like, <laughs> I'm on trend again. I love that for me. I want to hear from you. So sound off in the comments down below. Give this video a like while you're at it and subscribe if you haven't already. I also know that you know someone that they need some of these trends in their life. They need a day bed, honey. I love that for them. You love that for them. Share this video with them because friends help friends and I will see you in the next one.